Uh, so I'm Juan Russo and I'll be presenting my project with Dr. So, uh, looking at clinical outcomes in ACS patients treated with Ticagalor, who then underwent uh, in-hospital coronary artery bypass grafting. And this is a study out of the Capital Registry. So we have no funding sources to disclose. So Ticagalor is a potent and reversible P2Y12 receptor antagonist, increasingly used in the management of patients with acute coronary syndromes. We know that a significant number of these patients, approximately 10%, require an emergent or urgent coronary artery bypass grafting after treatment with an ADP receptor antagonist. The optimal timing of cabbage following ticagrel discontinuation has not been well studied, and there's different opinions from international guidelines as to the optimal timing of cabbage after ADP receptor antagonist discontinuation. For this reason, we sought to assess clinical outcomes in ACS patients requiring cabbage during the in-hospital admission after uh, uh, treatment with ticagrelor in relation to the timing of surgery following ticagrelor discontinuation. For this, we used data from the Capital Registry, which was a single center retrospective observational study of patients treated with an ADP receptor antagonist for ACS and undergoing in-hospital coronary artery bypass grafting. For our particular study, we looked at consecutive ACS patients undergoing in-hospital cabbage after treatment with ticagrelor between January 2012 and March 2015. We then stratified the patient population in relation to the timing of cabbage following ticagrelor discontinuation into three pre-specified strata, less than 48 hours, 48 hours to four days, and five days or more. Lastly, we compared bleeding and major adverse cardiovascular events in relation to the timing of ticagrelor discontinuation prior to cabbage. Here we see some of our main results. Uh, to the left is a pie graph showing the specific ADP receptor antagonists used in our ACS patients undergoing cabbage. The majority of patients at 76% were treated with clopidogrel, 17% were treated with ticagrelor, and 1% was treated with prazogrel. When we looked at the timing of cabbage following ticagrelor discontinuation, we see that 48% of patients underwent cabbage five days or more after ticagrelor discontinuation, but the majority of patients at 52% underwent cabbage within five days of ticagrelor discontinuation. Here we see our baseline patient characteristics, and when we looked at basic patient demographics, we see that they're relatively well balanced in relation to ticagrelor discontinuation timing prior to cabbage. However, we do note that there's a higher incidence of preoperative intraortic balloon pump and inotrope use in patients who underwent cabbage within 48 hours of ticagrelor discontinuation, again highlighting the selection bias as patients who undergo early cabbage probably do so for a reason. When we looked at our bleeding events, we used major definitions, including the universal definition of perioperative bleeding, the bleeding academic research consumption, uh, and uh, Timmy Cabbage bleeding. And again, we see that there's a significantly higher incidence of bleeding in patients who undergo cabbage within 48 hours of ticagrelor discontinuation. There's also a significant drop when ticagrelor discontinuation is greater than 48 hours. But there appears to be no significant drop between the cohort of patients who underwent cabbage uh, within 48 hours to four days after ticagrelor discontinuation and five days or more after ticagrelor discontinuation. When we looked at adverse events, uh, we defined our primary endpoint as the uh, incidence of major adverse cardiovascular events, which was a composite of death, reinfarction, repeat revascularization, and stroke. We see that there is no significant difference in the incidence of MACE between the different ticagrelor timing discontinuation strata for both MACE and the individual components of MACE, but we do, some, uh, we do note uh, interesting numerical uh, differences. For the cohort of patients who underwent cabbage uh, five days or more after ticagrelor discontinuation, we note that there is a numerically higher uh, incidence of uh, adverse uh, events. So MACE was 11% compared to 8% in the cohort of patients who underwent cabbage 48 hours to four days after ticagrelor discontinuation. And this difference appeared to be powered mostly by an uh, uh, increase in death and an increase in stroke in the cohort of patients undergoing cabbage five days or more after ticagrelor discontinuation. So our study, like any non-randomized comparison, should be considered hypothesis generating only and examined in the context of several limitations. 
Uh, this was a small observational study, uh, which was not powered uh, to examine the outcomes uh, that were looked at. Uh, again, being a non-randomized comparison, uh, causality should not be uh, inferred in the comparisons made. Uh, there's significant selection bias in the timing of cabbage following ACS, and this may have significantly impacted both our efficacy and bleeding endpoints. And lastly, this uh, represents a single center experience and may not be representative of all centers across Canada or North America. However, our study does provide significant insights into cabbage following ACS after treatment with ticagalor. So a significant number of ACS patients require cabbage, uh, undergo cabbage within five days of ticagalor discontinuation. Bleeding rates appear to be higher when cabbage is performed within 48 hours of the cabbage discontinuation. However, after 48 hours, there does not appear to be any significant decrease in bleeding events associated with further delays in surgery. For clinical practice, our results would suggest that the optimal timing of cabbage following Ticago discontinuation may actually be between 48 hours and 4 days. Further delays in cabbage within this period should probably be weighed against potential increases in ischemic events. However, given that this was a small, non-randomized comparison, larger prospective studies are needed to corroborate these hypotheses. Thank you.